Rebel Ideas, the basic concept is about diversity. How when you bring people together with different insights, different perspectives, different experiences, you get an uplift in collective intelligence. So it's about how to transform the abilities of individuals and to make wholes, teams, institutions, organizations, societies more than the sum of their parts. So diversity, you can think of it in a number of different ways. There's demographic diversity, differences in race, in gender, uh, in sexual orientation, in religion, in social class. And then on the other hand, there's cognitive diversity, which is differences in perspective, uh, experience, insights, um, and thinking styles. There are certain areas where you definitely want to have teams. When problems are very complex, no one person has a unique insight, and that's when bringing different people together, you get this massive uplift in problem solving, in creativity, in the ability to make meaningful predictions. There are other areas of life where things are better done by individuals. Writing a book, I think, is probably more towards the individual. I can certainly see circumstances where you do want to have a group of people writing a book together, when I wrote the first draft, I got a diverse group of people to give me their perspective on whether it worked or it didn't. And I took those on board. And you know, the book is an end product of a huge amount of different people giving me inputs. If you think about um, hiring a relay team, you just want fast runners. If they're all of the same race, gender, social class, it doesn't matter very much. If you start to diversify the team, and using some criteria of recruitment other than speed, the team's going to be slower. So there are certain situations where you just hire people for their individual talent. In complex tasks, this flips. If you take a group of economic forecasters and you take the top four most accurate forecasters, that's not necessarily the best team. If they use the same model, went to the same universities, think about the economy in the same way. They're basically all going to make the same prediction and they're going to make the same errors. It's only when you bring economists together who have diverse models that you can increase accuracy by up to 15%. So this is a very well-known phenomenon known as the wisdom of crowds. But it's even stronger when you move from making predictions to problem solving or coming up with creative ideas or innovating. And this is why it's really all of the big problems we face from climate change to global poverty to coming up with a new product or a new strategy at work. This is where it really counts. The thing about this is there are so many case studies. The trick, I think, in trying to write a book like this is to land a case study in a way which clearly demonstrates how homogeneity led to bad decision making. Remember, humans I mean, this really is a, a key point that perhaps I should have made earlier. Humans have a tendency towards homophily. This means we like to hang around with people who are like us, who think like us. When people are mirroring back our own perspectives, our own beliefs, to a certain extent our own prejudices, it makes us feel comfortable. It makes us feel smarter when people are telling us stuff we already know or already believe. So what that means is when we start hanging around with other human beings, we tend to instinctively create human groups that are not cognitively diverse. So this tendency is like an invisible gravitational force that is leading to precisely the thing that is undermining our collective intelligence. And that's why it's so important to be aware of it and then to think about, what about this group? Are we a bit homogenous? Do we have the right voices in the room? Could it be we're looking at the data in a really sophisticated way, but there's a ton of data we haven't actually looked for because we haven't realized it's out there? One case study that I think is, is quite a historic example is the CIA and its analysts in the build-up to the 9-11 terrorist atrocity. Because the CIA had a group of analysts who were individually brilliant. They passed very rigorous tests, polygraphs, verbal and numerical reasoning, and a whole range of others. And the CIA were absolutely right when they said, we have incredibly talented individual analysts. The problem was homophily. The recruiters were hiring people who were talented, but also had very similar social 
and demographic backgrounds, predominantly white, male, liberal arts graduates, West Coast Protestants. And it meant that although any one of these individuals would have been vast assets in a diverse team, as a collective, they were catastrophically incapable of seeing what was going on in the Middle East, of what bin Laden was doing. And as I try to do in the first chapter, I trace the reasoning of the CIA juxtaposed with what was actually happening and what a diverse group would have seen and how this inexorably led to major oversights and omissions that enabled those terrorist atrocities to take place.